Welcome to this bite-sized, memorable look at the world around us. I'm Jim from Nature's Work. As we take a closer look at the life of alpine plants, one aspect of great interest and importance is the influence of geology on the distribution of alpine flowers. And we'll study this through something called vicariance. So vicariance is essentially the physical separation of a population by a physical barrier or an ecological niche which results in two closely related species. Vicariants can also be distinguished by differences in soil moisture or climatic conditions. And most alpine plants show a preference for either acidic or calcareous soils. So plants are defined as either calcium loving calcicoles or calcium intolerant or calcifuge species. So geology not only affects the morphology of the land, but the movement of water and the rate of erosion. And these contrasting geologies play a major role in the distribution of flowers. So we have limestone, and through this presentation, we'll have the limestone or the calcium loving species on the left hand side, and then the uh, calcium hating or the silica rich rocks and the, the calcifuge species on the right hand side. So we're going to illustrate this vicariance through a, a series of species, which we'll just show you now. So one very common plant across the Alps is a gentian known as trumpet gentian, but there are actually two very closely related species. Trumpet gentian or uh, Clusius gentian or the gentiana clusii is a, a, a plant you'll find on calcium rich or limestone environments and the stemless gentian sometimes known as Koch gentian uh, gentiana acaulis are found on silica rich or calcium poor rocks so there's a classic example uh, of a, a confusion as well the confusion comes in the name in the books because some books talk about trumpet gentian or stemless gentian or clusius gentian but the the key that you need to understand is that the species itself the latin name one is found in um and you never get that 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 wrong in any of the books it's known as clusia is found in limestone regions and uh, a corless species is found in uh the, the silica rich environment but they're incredibly similar to look at. Um, similar in habitat, altitude, uh, and their distribution, but the geology is the key thing. Things that you might look for in a corliss, there are green spots and stripes within the flower itself, and clusii doesn't have these olive or green stripes on the inside but they're, they're so similar, it's very difficult to, to distinguish. Two other closely related species are two members of the rhododendron family, part of the heather, the rhododendron is part of the heather family. Uh, these, these wonderful evergreen thickets of, 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 of alpine rose that you'll find uh, throughout the Alps. Hairy alpine rose, restricted more to the Eastern Alps, on limestone and the alpen rose, the common alpen rose, which has got like the back of the leaves are, are rusty brown. Um, so you, you can distinguish them uh, hairless, but also these rusty brown underside of the leaves. Both species contain toxins, which discourage grazing and the dried branches were once used to make brooms and also to filter milk. Two closely related uh, plants in the rock jasmine family, beautiful cushion forming plants found in exposed rock faces. They both survive by putting down deep roots into rock crevices and then form these large colonies over time, these tiny leaf rosettes. On the left you have Swiss rock jasmine, greyish green, slightly hairy leaf rosettes, white flowers, yellow centres. Uh, they're found in the Western Alps and calcium rich rocks and Vandelli's rock jasmine. They have densish white hairs on the leaves. Uh, you can see the crystalline nature of the rock that is found on, on the granite on the photo on the right hand side. And they're found uh, in the inner Alps 
but also down to the, the uh, Apennines and even into the Atlas Mountains. So we have Black Yarrow on the left, which is a Calcicole species found in the Eastern Alps. It's got dark hairs on the stems. It's not an aromatic plant. And you get these clusters of flowers about between two to 10 in the cluster. It's also known as dark yarrow or dark stemmed sneezewort. And on the right, we have musk milfoil, which is a calcifuge species found in the Eastern and Central Alps, very aromatic. There are flower clusters from three to 25, and it's a, almost a hairless plant, but they're very similar. And then in the buttercup family, we have the alpine buttercup, which is, it's hairless. It's got shiny green leaves with rounded lobes, uh, often two to three, flowers in the cluster at the tip of the, uh, the stem. And on the right, we have glassy crowfoot, which is again hairless, but the leaves are three lobed. Uh, the alpine buttercup has five lobes. And the flowers there become pink or purplish, solitary, or, or up to two and three in the cluster again. Both are found across the Alps, but glassy crowfoot is a, a, a plant of, of higher altitude as well. They grow up to 4,000 meters. Um, so it's a true alpine species and they'll flower, the glassy crowfoot will flower uh, a couple of days after the snows have melted. So it's a, a phenomenal, a phenomenal high alpine plant. And finally, we'll look at two pask flowers. So on the left, we have alpine pask flower, calcium loving plant, and then the yellow alpine pask flower, which is uh, a calcifuge sometimes considered a subspecies of the alpine pass flower, but again, its distribution is limited and restricted to the geology. If you'd like to know more, why not join me on a course in the Swiss Alps? Alternatively, you could purchase my book, The Alps, A Natural Companion. Just go to my website at natureswork.co.uk, where I also have a range of other nature-based playing cards available.